بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم There are four different worlds that we move in from one world to another. A world before this world that the scholars refer to it as Alam al Arwah, the world of souls. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiped the back of Adam and all the offsprings and the progeny of Adam appeared in front of him. We were all there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked that question, Alas to be Rabbikum, aren't I your Lord? So we all responded back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Yes, O oh Allah, you are our Lord. But then Allah Azza wa Jal moved us into this world where He created our bodies for us, our intellect, our brain, our memory. Then after this world, we enter a third world called Alam al Barzakh, the world of barrier. And that's where you die. And that's the world that you live in your grave. But then comes after the, the final world. The final world. Alamul Akhirah. The hereafter. The world of the hereafter. Where it begins with the blowing of the trumpet. It begins with the blowing of the trumpet. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that how can I relax? How can I live in comfort? How can I rest at ease? Knowing that the angel of the trumpet had held the trumpet staring at the throne of Allah waiting for Allah Azza wa Jal to command him and give him the order to blow in the trumpet in which he does Blow in the trumpet and the first blowing of the trumpet is God, the blowing of destruction. So you've got an angel called Angel Israfil. And this angel has a task. He has an appointed task that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had appointed him to do and that is to blow in the trumpet. So there is an angel called Angel Israfil and there is a trumpet so big, so humongous that you can't even conceive, you can't even imagine. That some of the scholars say, and it is a saying of the scholars, not the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that the circle of the trumpet, bigger than this world, bigger than this earth. And now you've got the angel, the angel of trumpet, angel Israfil. He's holding the trumpet. And he is standing in a position, in a place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better. Staring at the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal, waiting for that moment that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will command an order. This angel, angel Israfil, blow in the trumpet, and angel Israfil will blow in the trumpet. And that very first moment that he blows into the trumpet, the first time Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will destroy this world. And that's why it's called Nafkhatu Saq. The blowing of destruction. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy this world and those who are living on the face of this world. But you know what? Because you are from amongst those that say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Allah azza wa will give you an advantage. See how heavy. See how heavy the word La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah is. What's your advantage because you have La ilaha illallah in your heart and you are from amongst those who utter with La ilaha illallah? The advantage is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow the angel of the trumpet Israfil to blow in the trumpet as long as there is someone who says La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah on the face of this earth. He's not allowed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the souls of those who believe in him those who say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, before the angel Israfil blows in the trumpet. Before angel Israfil blows in the trumpet. So on the disbelievers, 
on the non-believers living on the face of this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the day of judgment to emerge and the day of judgment to take place. And it all starts with that blowing of that trumpet the first time. نَفْخَةُ السَّعَقِ وَنُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ فَسَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly in the Quran al-Kareem When the trumpet is blown in it And whoever lives on the face of this earth And whoever lives in the heavens shall die, shall be destroyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy everyone and Allah will take everyone away. No matter how rich you are, powerful you are, strong you are, influential you are, prestigious you are, your time will come. But again, because of la ilaha illallah, because of la ilaha illallah in your heart, because la ilaha illallah in your mind, because la ilaha illallah on your tongue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not make you experience that terrifying and petrifying moment. Subhanallah. See how valuable and great la ilaha illallah is. See how valuable and heavy la ilaha illallah is. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah will live by it. And la ilaha illallah we want to die on it. And la ilaha illallah we want to be resurrected with it. La ilaha illallah. So now, right now, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it, 1,400 years ago, the angel of the trumpet, angel Israfil, he is standing there with the trumpet in his mouth, carrying the trumpet and waiting for Allah Azza wa Jal to say to him, blow in the trumpet. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself, he says, how can I relax? How can I live in ease? Knowing that the angel of trumpet had held and grabbed on the trumpet and he's got it in his mouth waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to command him to blow in it. If that's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is the one that's guaranteed the jannah and guaranteed no punishment, if he can't even relax, then how could you even relax? If he can't even live in comfort and ease, then what courage do we have that we live in comfort and ease neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands in our life? My brothers and my sisters, I'm not here to petrify you. I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to remind you and remind myself before you. That we've deceived ourselves. We ourselves deceived ourselves. And we think that we live in this world forever. As if we're never going to encounter or experience that moment that Allah Azza wa Jalla will take us away from this world. So now the angel of the trumpet, angel Israfil will blow in the trumpet. And that moment that he blows in the trumpet the first time, it's called Nafqatul Sa'iq. The blowing of the trumpet. The blowing of destruction. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy whatever is on the face of this earth and whatever is in the heavens and no one and nothing can stop Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. And no one can stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. That Allah azza wa jal mentions some scenes for us in the Quran al-Kareem. How the earth will shake. How the heavens will crack. How the oceans and the seas will explode. And people will be running away from one another like wild beasts. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, people will think they are drunken, but they're not drunken. But the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so severe. The punishment of Allah azza wa jal is so severe. What are you going to do, my brother and my sister in Islam? Why have you prepared for that moment? And everyone shall die. Imagine that moment. 
Imagine what you can't even imagine. Think of the unthinkable. Everyone shall die and everyone will be dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the death of every single living thing, every single creation of Allah. That includes human beings. That includes jinn. That even includes the angels and the beings that we know of and the beings that we don't even know of. Animals, whatever is out there that we know of and we don't even know of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the souls of every single creation. Every single creation they had created. Even the close servants. Even the close servants to Allah Azza wa Jal will be dead. The prophets and the messengers already died. And even the close angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take their souls away. That it's been narrated, and some of the scholars say it's a weak hadith. That during that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands of the blowing of destruction, and there's another hadith that the duration between the first blowing of the trumpet and the second blowing of the trumpet which is called the blowing of resurrection the hadith says there's a duration of 40 whether it's 40 minutes 40 hours 40 days 40 years 40 thousands of years allah Azza wa Jalla knows better but then what happens in between the two blowings of the trumpet between the first blowing of the trumpet the blowing of destruction while everyone is dead and the blowing of resurrection where Allah Azza wa Jal resurrects everyone back alive. There is a weak narration that says during that time and during that moment, every single living thing and every single human being, jinn, animal and angel will be dead. Except illa man sha Allah. Except those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees not to die. So the scholar said, those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees not to die are Angel, Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael, the eight angels that carry the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal and the angel of death. So they will be the only ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take their soul. So the angel of death will come to Allah and he'll speak to Allah and say, Ya Allah, all your creation, all your creation is dead. All your creation is dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, and who stayed alive? And Allah knows better. So the angel of death will say, Ya Allah, it is only angel Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael, the eight angels that carry your throne, and you and I, Ya Rabbil Alameen, are alive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command for the death of Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael. So the angel of death will say, Ya Rabb, all your creation is dead. So Allah Azza wa say to him, and he stayed alive. So the angel of death will say, Ya Allah, it is only the eight angels that carry your throne. You and I, you and I, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command for the destruction and the death of the eight angels that carry his throne. Eight angels carry the great throne of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take their souls. Allah Azza wa Jal will grant them death. Why? Because Allah doesn't need anyone and Allah doesn't need anything and Allah does not need his throne. Allah does not need the angels that carry his throne and Allah does not need any of his creation but all his creation need Allah the creator. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the soul of the angel of death for no living thing to exist except Allah the one that lives and never ever dies and I want you to imagine that moment imagine that moment that now all the creation of Allah and every single creation of Allah is dead and not even one human being not even one animal, one jinn, one angel, one being is alive. Except Allah, their creator. So what happens then, my brothers and my sisters? The most amazing thing happens. The most amazing thing happens 
in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Allah azza wa ta'ala granted every single creation of his death Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start asking questions by Ya Rabb Oh Allah to whom are you addressing to whom are you asking so Allah azza wa ta'ala will say Aina al-jabbarun Aina al-mutakabbirun where are those with pride? Where are those with glory? Where are the pride ones? And where are the tyrant ones? لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ To whom is the kingdom today? So the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, no response comes back to Allah. And who's there to respond back to Allah? Everyone is dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the second time. Aina al Jabbarun. Where are those with pride? Aina al Mutakabbirun. Where are those with glory? Liman al Mulku al Yawm. To whom is the kingdom today? Who is the Lord? And who is the only Lord? And who is the true Lord? But here, Allah, no one is there. No one is alive to respond back to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the third time. And Allah Azza wa Jal will say, Aina al Jabbarun, Aina al Mutakabbirun. Where are those with pride? Where are those with glory? Liman al Mulku al Yawm. To whom is the kingdom today? Who is the Lord? Who is the only Lord? Who is the true Lord? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer himself because there's no one to answer him. So Allah azza wa jalla will respond to himself and he'll say, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahhar, the true Lord and only Lord and no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the irresistible, the most powerful one. Allahu Akbar. What a moment. What a moment, my brothers and my sisters. You are not there because you are dead. And no one is there because they are dead. No king, no queen, no powerful, no rich, no strong, no prestigious, no famous. No one is there except Allah, the one that lives and never ever dies. لمن الملك اليوم to him is the kingdom today. Lillahi al-wahid al-qahhar. To Allah Azza wa Jal. The only one, the irresistible. To him is the kingdom today. To Allah. And only Allah. And no one but Allah. So my brothers and my sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect. Angel Israfil. The angel of trumpet to come back alive. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command him to blow in the trumpet the second time. So he'll blow in the trumpet the second time. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as Nafkhatul Ba'thi, the blowing of resurrection. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect every single living thing that ever existed on the face of this earth or in this universe. So everyone will start coming back alive. All the angels will come back alive. All the jinn will come back alive. All mankind and human beings from the time of Adam to the day of judgment will come back, come back alive, including you and I. Including you and I. We will all be resurrected to come back alive in a different world than this world. A land that's different to this land. And a heaven that's different to this heaven. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran al-Kareem, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced this world with a different world. A land different than this land. And a heaven different than the heaven that we currently live under. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect every single one of us. So imagine, not him, not her. Don't feel sorry for them. 
Imagine yourself. It's going to be you that's going to die. And it's going to be you that's going to be resurrected.